Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. This is the uh, third of our uh, committee of the whole meetings. Uh, we'll have roll call first. Ann Wangaman. Aye. 16 aye. Born. Here. Powell. Oh, excused? Excused, I'm okay. sorry. Yes. Sorry. Right. Uh, Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha here. Hannah. Here. There's a surprise. Heidemann. Here. <laughs> Kath. Here. I heard we didn't continue that credit, so. <laughs> Kittleson, thank you. Clayunis. Here. Montemayor. Mm -hmm. Excused. Reinflesh. Excused. Surik. Excused. Vanderweel. Excused. Vu? Yeah. Wangaman. It's on vacation, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can we have a quorum? No, I don't know. I'm in the proper seat, but uh, I asked to be excused for ten minutes, so I okay. had contractors to back your phone. Thank you very much. No, we will no. await your right. return. Okay, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone stand, please. <coughs> I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we've a bit of a time crunch today, and I appreciate everybody coming here for this. Uh, this is a presentation on the IT, uh, cons from the IT consultant, Mr. Andy Pelkey. He's going to give us his um, overview on where we are with the IT situation, and we also have the finance director, Terry Hansen here, uh, who's on vacation, but came in for this meeting, so we appreciate that. And uh, we hope to have time for questions, so we're gonna ask Andy to move things along as much as he can. Okay, Andy, take it away. All right, thank you very much. Uh, again, my name is Andy Pelkey. I am here um, looking at Organization and try to figure out what to do with it. Uh, use the microphone. Oh, yeah, sorry. The yeah. microphone behind you here. You can't hear me? Chairperson? It's on television. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I'd make a motion to have use this one. You can clip it on. Minutes have been approved and uh, second and uh, moved and seconded to be approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Minutes from July 21st. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. All right, my name is Andy Pelkey. Uh, I'm the IT consultant that was hired to look at your IT organization to figure out where to go with it. Um, I have spent the last two months or so doing various things to that end. I have some high level recommendations which I need the council to understand, approve, because the f recommendations that are going to come after are sort of within scope of that. And so if the council doesn't want us to go this direction, we need to, the, you know, the recommendations that we give you from this point forward will change. So um, this is, um, I'm going to speed this thing up a little bit. Um, first of all, we have to look at what an IT, uh, what should an IT department do? An IT department is supposed to provide the following services, consulting, project management, software development, training, support, and preventative maintenance. Okay, these are all things that we should be doing. So just briefly, let's go over what those things are. Consulting, what is it? Consulting provides advice on a wide range of IT-related topics, including identifying business needs, recommending the most appropriate solution to meet those needs, developing a strategy to ensure the ongoing operation of the organization, this is called institutionalization, uh, and planning for system failures, backup and recovery. Project management. Project management is the discipline of planning, organizing, and managing resources to bring about the successful completion of a specific project goals and objectives. Project management is an entire field of study, that's important. Project managers make sure the process keeps moving and that milestones are met. Project managers make sure the individual contributors who may report to different people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Project managers measure and report on progress. They let you know early that a project is in trouble while you still have time to do something about it. That's important. You don't want to wait till the near the end of the project and go, oh my gosh, we're in trouble. The whole point of milestones is to find out early that you're in trouble when you have time to, to adjust. A project manager will ensure the successful outcome of a project. Software development. Uh, what is it? Software development produces a computer application to solve a business need. 
software is written in a particular programming language such as COBOL, BASIC, or C Sharp. Most of our cu custom applications here at the city were written in COBOL, which is one of the oldest programming languages there are. Software development is expensive, so we don't want to do it unless we have to. Training. Very simply, training provides hands-on instruction on how to use the solution to fulfill a business need. Support. Support is needed to fix systems that are not working as designed. Fix problems the user has created via some mistake they made. Support can include small enhancements to correct design flaws or to meet business needs not previously identified. Support is commonly managed via a help desk, which we don't have. Preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance includes installing software patches that fix known problems. It includes installing software updates to retain vendor support. Oftentimes, if you have old software and you call the vendor for help, they'll say, what version are you running? Well, we're running version two. Sorry, we don't support that anymore. So you have to, you have to keep up to date with software to get vendor support. Preventative maintenance includes cleaning hardware devices such as printers and desktop computers. And most importantly, it should be done regularly on our time to avoid installing updates during a crisis, which can lead to further problems that you didn't know about. So you want to do preventive maintenance, not when it ab becomes absolutely necessary, but when it's an opportune time to do so. Okay, so again, these are the kinds of things that IT should be providing to the various different departments in the city. At 50,000 feet, we have two problems. One is that there's a huge gap in what we should be providing, these items over here, versus what we are actually providing. And I sort of faded them off to the relative percentage. So the fact that you can't read this thing that says software development is because we don't do a whole lot of it. And project management, we do almost none. We're doing very little of any of this stuff. Where we're really spending all of our time is doing support. Just break, fix, break, fix, break, fix, little support kind of items. No projects, no consulting. No, not much training, no preventative maintenance. We're just not doing it. Okay, so um, uh, we spend very little time understanding the needs of each department. As a result, our consulting is limited to a small amount of product research done occasionally and only by request. We do not have a business analyst to do this kind of work. Uh, we have not managed projects for a long time, several years at least. We do not have a project manager. For the last few years, our software development has been all support and maintenance. No new applications have been built. No significant <coughs> additions to existing applications have been delivered. We're just not doing it. Our focus over the last several years has been on support, which has consumed most of our resources. Preventative maintenance is often deferred, which means it's not getting done. And one reason for the gap is that the number of IT resources has been shrinking while the amount of technology we're using in all departments has been growing. Usually as the departments adopt new technology and reduce staff, there is some incremental in increase in the IT department to support that new technology. That's not happening, it's going the opposite direction. So many of the complaints departments have today, and I've talked to all of them, with IT are due to this gap in service. That means that closing the gap will reduce the complaints. However, it will not eliminate all complaints. To eliminate all the complaints, we need to shift in, in thinking about what IT is and what it isn't. In other words, we need a new business model. The IT department needs to think of itself as a service organization, helping departments as customers fulfill their IT needs in a supportive slash consulting role. Some people will say, this is what we are, this is what we do. Well, it's not really true. When I got here, there was definitely a, um, uh, with all good intentions, it wasn't done out of malice or anything like that, with good intentions, the IT department more, uh, thought of themselves more as an authority, uh, an authority over the computer systems that everybody uses. You know, we, we control it, we're the authority, um, which has led to some problems. The IT should not think of itself as the controller of all information technology. It should advise its customers on what to purchase, but the customer makes the final decision. That customer, by the way, usually a department head, is accountable to the mayor on their decision, so it doesn't have to be IT. There, there will be accountability, it just won't be from the IT department. The IT department should advise the city on what policies should be adopted to prevent wasteful spending and to avoid unnecessary problems across all departments. However, this should not, these should not be IT department policies. These are city, city policies. For example, uh, one of the things today is that there are no people in departments that have admin access to their computer. That's to prevent them from installing software that the city doesn't know about. That's not necessarily a bad policy, but it should not be an IT policy. It should, it's a city policy. We just implement it. 
slight shift in thinking, but very important because of this credibility problem that IT has because of this authoritarian kind of attitude. The mayor and the common council should seek opinion of the IT department before approving specific IT expenditures. This is important. You know, one of the pushbacks you'll get from the people in IT is that we need to be the authority to make sure that money isn't wasted. Uh, in other words, the department has don't go around the IT department, go to the council, ask for money for something which they really shouldn't be doing. So the simple way to solve that problem is just to simply <coughs> make sure that the council knows that if you're asked to, to provide um, approval on a specific IT expenditure, the, the natural question you should ask is, well, what did IT say? And if IT says it's a good idea, well, then you're sort of now moving on to, well, is it a good use of money? If IT says it's not, a re it's not the recommended way we would do it, then it's like, okay, wait a minute, we need to understand the IT department's perspective on this problem uh, and, and, and maybe look at it a little deeper, okay? That'll be sufficient to head off wasteful spending on you know, people that just ask for stuff and maybe don't quite know what they're doing. Um, departments should pay for the IT, direct, for IT directly out of their budgets. The city as a whole should pay for IT services like consulting that it needs all departments to have. Okay, and that's because if you make uh, the departments pay for IT directly out of their budgets, they might tend to short circuit things like getting good advice because they want to save money, which in the end costs money. So it's not completely an IT, uh, each department pays for all IT services. The city uh, should probably pay for some of that as the IT department should be paying for some of the work that I'm going to talk about later in these slides. But for the most part, uh, the departments control the dollars, they control the decisions, they're accountable for how it's spent. Okay, so the vision of what IT should be. Looking at these two um, recommendations that I'm, I'm making, these two problems that I see, the vision for IT is that the IT department should become a service organization, not an authority, helping departments as customers fulfill their IT needs in a supportive consulting role. <coughs> this means that in the future, departments, we want them to prefer to use the in-house IT services because we will get, we don't have it now, but we will get a reputation for successful outcomes and low cost. This will only be possible if the IT department does the following, obtains a thorough knowledge of the city's business. We have to understand the business in order to recommend the right technology to meet those business needs. That's like, seems really obvious, but we don't uh, Maintain experience with today's mainstream and proven, technolo proven technologies. Build a track record managing projects, which we don't do. Incorporate training into all projects. Build a track record of providing timely support and we need to make sure we have an income stream to pay for maintenance so that it gets done. Okay, so this is the vision. Today, your IT department has no vision. I asked somebody what their vision was, and they're like, well, somebody had said, well, yeah, we do, and so what, what is it? Well, they didn't really, couldn't really say what it was. So if you don't know what the vision is, do you really have one? You know, a piece of paper in a drawer doesn't quite, isn't quite cut it. So let's look at the vision that I've outlined here and how we stack up today. The IT department should be a service organization, not an authority, helping departments as customers fulfill their IT needs in a supportive consulting role. Today, currently there is no clear direction on this. The IT staff is confused on their role as an authority, and this has created an unhealthy tension between IT and some departments, which has greatly damaged their credibility. Really, that's, that's very true. In the future, again, part of our vision, in the future, city departments should prefer to use in-house IT services because of their reputation for successful outcomes and low cost. Today, Quite honestly, many departments feel stuck with IT. IT manages few, if any, projects and has not accumulated any track record. Therefore, a reputation for successful outcomes has not been achieved. So we're not there. IT should obtain a thorough knowledge of the city's business. Biz today, business knowledge within the department has not been maintained. For example, when Margie left, no knowledge was transferred to any other business analyst. All that knowledge was gone. The staff, remain, the staff that remains does not have the time nor the directive to reacquire that knowledge. And the department does not have a dedicated business analyst. IT should maintain experience with today's mainstream and proven technologies. Today, the city uses a fair number of mainstream technologies. IT has the still, and, and they have the skills to support them. The biggest problem in their technology set is that um, we run all of our, wind, our desktops run Microsoft Windows, but we have little, if any, ability to develop applications for Windows. Most of our applications are done in COBOL, which run on an AS400. Okay, so we're really running em screen screen emulators to an AS400. The desktop really provides no value in that particular situation. Uh, part of our vision, IT should build a track record managing projects. Currently, IT has managed very few
projects in the last several years and therefore has not accumulated any track record. A reputation for successful outcomes has not been achieved. We're just not doing any project management at all, really at all. Uh, IT should incorporate training options in all projects. Training, currently training should be part of the project plan. Since IT has not managed any, managed any projects, it has not delivered training consistently. And I heard that over and over again from departments. We want training, but we haven't done it consistently. We have done some, but just not consistently. Okay, so any new project where you're putting a new technology, part of the project plan has to be, well, where's the training coming from? Now, to be honest with you, with training, recognize that most training should be outsourced since the need for training is temporary and rather uneven. If you bring in a new CAMA software for your assessor's department, they have a need for training on that CAMA software, but that needs temporary. It's when we get it in, we need to know how to use it. Once we've used it for a year or six months, you know, it, it, we, we know it, so we don't need any more training. So it's really best done by the, app, the person who created the application, the vendor who created the application, um, and, it, and it really should be outsourced. There's no point. We don't have enough stuff that we need to have people in-house worried about training. Um, the departments that use the application on a day-to-day -day basis, i.e. the assessor department, should be maintaining that knowledge gained by such training. So as their employees come, as, as leave and then new ones come in, they should be responsible for maintaining that business knowledge. Uh, future, IT should build a track record of providing timely support. Currently, we have no method to measure this. Although we do spend 90% of our time providing support, there is a significant gap between what our customers expect and what we deliver. I mean, the time to get support is often, well, we get to it within a week. Well, a week is an awful long time when somebody needs help with their computer. I mean, some stuff happens really quick, but there's just, there's a lot of support work, not a lot of people, and we have no way, we have no help desk, we're not measuring anything, so there's a gap between what they expect and what we, what we deliver. It is what it is, right? Uh, future, IT needs an income stream to pay for maintenance. The city as a whole has built up a lot of information technology over the years. At the same time, the IT department has shrunk. We talked about that. Less resources means less is getting done, and choices have to be made about what gets done and what does not. Here's the kicker. Departments don't complain about preventative maintenance not getting done unless there's a problem, which means maintenance is deferred, which means departments aren't going to pay for it, which means it won't get done. And that's why there has to be some sort of separate income stream, um, not necessarily paid for the departments, maybe. Um, uh, uh, to make sure that this preventative maintenance gets done on our time, not when it becomes a crisis. So, a summary of how we stack up. To fulfill our new vision, IT needs to see itself as a service provider with the various departments as our customers. We need to expand the services to meet all of our customer needs, which is, means doing more than just support. Our current situation is no accident. We've been ha we have years of deferred investment and a lack of vision has resulted in a department that has only resources to focus on support. If nothing has changed, problems will accumulate as we continue to defer investment in IT. Eventually, the city will reach a point where a massive overhaul is needed at an inopportune time, and this is going to have a high price tag. So we don't want it to get that far. Okay, so uh, any questions so far? 19 minutes. i got 11 minutes left. Um, so the recommended change number one, rebuild the IT department by adopting the business model of a for-profit IT service, except run it at cost. This means the IT department should view itself as a business with 27 clients, the city being one, the 22 departments, and four other outlying municipalities that we service, with the needs of our clients taking front and center stage. The reason why I'm recommending this is that this model, this for-profit business model, will provide the guiding principles of how to address aspects of how we should do business. How do we respond to a situation will be dictated by this. It will provide both the IT staff and the clients with a clear direction on what the role of IT is and what authority they have. This in turn will alleviate the tensions that exist between IT and other departments which will greatly improve our credibility. Okay, so we need to have, the IT department needs to, if the IT department is a third-party for-profit business, we don't come in and tell you how to run. We don't tell you what you can do with that computer. We don't tell, we're not an authority. We're a consultant. We provide recommendations. We provide options. Option A, this is what we recommend. Option B, here's another recommendation. We don't think it's as good because of whatever reason. Um, so we try to influence you without having any authority over you, which I think is a better business model than what we have today. Recommend, recommended change number two. We need to give the IT department the means to provide all of these services. Right now, we only have the means to provide support. 
So this other stuff isn't going to get done if we have means to do this. This means, and it's not, it's going to be the, I think this is going to be the hardest thing for the council to swallow, quite honestly, is that at a time where we're talking about budget cuts and saving money, now I'm coming to you and saying, we need to spend more on IT because we've deferred this investment and our IT group is shrinking, but we're trying to bring in more technology that, that needs more IT people to manage. I mean, we're going in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's, that's going to be the toughest part, where to find the money for it. So how will this change things? The IT department will expand to include, if we follow these two recommendations, the IT department will expand to include services we are not providing today, but we should be. The IT staff will be focused on servicing the needs of our clients, not dictating to them. It will eliminate all of today's common complaints. The city will move forward again to become an effective user of information technology. Okay, now um, I'm going to stop here for a minute because we only have ten, uh, nine more minutes and the rest of this just gets into more detail. But um, I guess the, the, the reason why I wanted to bring this to the council, the, the IT department has seen this, the IT steering committee has seen this, the department heads have seen this, okay, they all agree that this is, these are sort of high level, this is where we need to go. But the, the, the important thing that you need to understand about this is that the recommendations that are forthcoming, like hiring a business analyst, is going to cost money. And if you don't buy into this vision, or if you want me to go to another direction, I need to know that because otherwise the work I do from this point forward is going to be going down the wrong path. Okay? So, um, so skipping past all this stuff. So what we're going to be doing as IT as a service organization is understanding who our customers are understanding their needs, assembling the right people with the right skills to meet those needs. This is what you would do if you were starting an IT for-profit business. This is what, these are the things that you'd be doing. Have a written agreement with each client, including a statement of what we will and will not do for them. I am working on this right now and I'm using that to collect the backlog of project work that I have to give you on August the 14th. Okay, so in other words, we haven't been managing any projects. There's a huge list, there's a huge backlog of project work that's, that hasn't been done that you know, we've wanted to do for many years. And, and one of the ways I'm getting that is, is by um, going through these client agreements. So I have a, an IT service agreement with every, different, every department. Sets expectations of what we're gonna do and what they're gonna get. Um, provide the service, get paid, measure results, recognize, reward people for outstanding performance, and then revisit this Every year we need to look at, okay, who our customers are, what are their needs, we have, to, we have to change, their needs change. We have to look at the people, do we have the right people still? These client agreements are gonna be done over every year. There'll be a service agreement in place for every client done for, for a one year period of time. And obviously provide service, get paid, et cetera. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of zip through this stuff here. Um, these are kind of, this is, I wanna show you this because this is, um, we talk about assembling the right people. You know, we need a department manager, yes, but we also need a business analyst or a business analyst. I don't know how many yet. We need project managers. These people have um, a very specific set of skills that are needed to provide these services. We need web, Windows, AS400 developers. Today, all we have is AS400 developers. No web, no Windows. Uh, we need testers, network administrators, which we have, hardware technicians, which we have. Um, Okay, written agreement I'm working on, providing service, getting paid, measuring results, okay. Um, performance measurements, outlining client agreements. Uh, we gotta be held accountable to make sure that we have, and we wanna make sure we have measurable results. So help desk response time, time to resolution, client satisfaction, team performance measures. These are some of the things that we'll put in place when we run a for-profit IT organization kind of business. Okay, so where we go from here, I need you to approve these two recommendations or give me a new direction. These recommendations will allow us to provide the services. We will be forthcoming with more uh, specific requests based on this vision um, if, if you're okay with the direction we're going. Okay, so I got six minutes for questions. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions from the Alderman? Okay. Uh all the person Kilson first. Thanks, thanks, Chairman. Uh, how, Andy, how long do we have you? How long are you here with I the am, city? I am. I will be fired at the end of the year. Oh, <laughs> okay, so we have you <laughs> till the end of the year to yes. to keep rolling along with yes. all these. And the other question: Who are our customers? You you flip the, oh, by real are, quickly. There I, are, I wondered um, who. There are the city is one of them. <clears throat> there are twenty two departments. And we do actually work for... Other cities did you have listed four, there, there Yes, there's four outlying cities. Okay. Uh, there's a Plymouth, Kohler, there's four oh, wow. that okay. we're actually providing IT services for. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. And That's we should be getting paid for them. And, okay. <laughs> and we have a contract in uh, Alderman, Alderman Gisha. I don't have a microphone, but uh, um, here we go. Thank you. Uh, we actually have a contract in place with all these municipalities. Okay. Uh, the fee schedule and the whole thing. Problem is the hours have never been tracked. That has been work has been done, and they've never been billed since 2002. Oh. Uh, we're now in the process of at least starting to bill them from the beginning of 2009. I don't think it's fair to go back to 2002. No, no, no. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Uh, what is the current IT budget? Terry, about half a million. Yeah, 565. If we filled your wish list, what would the IT budget be? I don't know yet how many of these other people we need. I know we need someone to do project management. I know we need a business analyst. I don't know how many of those we need yet. That's what I'm working through this <coughs> backlog of projects and project lists. Yeah. So I will have that answer for you in my next uh, presentation. Okay. Alderman Heidemann. Uh, thank you, Chairman. When you're mentioning project, just give me an idea what the project is. What Okay, okay. Uh, just um, well, you have, you have um, support work, which is, you know, I have a request for something that's a short period of time. My computer is, the printer, printer isn't feeding correctly or something. It's very short support, break, fix kind of stuff. A project is a larger deliverable. It's delivering some piece of functionality that you don't have today. It's not fixing something. It's, so for example, implementing Munis would be a project. It would have very specific deliverables. Uh, implementing, uh, I know that, for example, building inspections wants a program to do um, housing inspections, all right, from start to finish. That would be a project. All right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, um, Alderman Bowers. Okay. Since I came in late, maybe you can uh, fill me in some of the information. You're, you're oh, Alderman made. Bowers, I don't have a microphone on. Oh. All right. I disconnected it. Since I came in late, yes. you are currently a consultant with the city? Correct. Okay, and we've had this program since 2002. What program? Well, you said we did other cities and that... Uh, we, have we have been providing IT services to outlying communities, like four of them, for a long time. Well, uh, the building sort of fell off the cliff in 2002. Oh, I see. Okay, but we kept on service yes. internally, whatever. Correct. So you had uh, uh, on your slide there, I believe, seven project managers that have to be hired. No, no, I'm sorry, not seven. There was a list of roles that we needed. We need a project manager. We need a business analyst. Okay. I don't. I'm not at the point where I can tell you how many we need. Okay. You don't know how many we have now. We have none. Yes, we have no oh, business I analysts and we have no project managers. There were seven different roles, yeah. yes. And, a, and a hundred, let's say 100,000 per, per, per mm -hmm. Well, we already, have, we already have hardware technician, we have a network administrator, we have an AS front end developer, um, we have a department manager, sort of. Um, but we don't, these two roles here are, are, are big roles that we don't have. Some of the stuff, my recommendation might be on some of the stuff that we're going to outsource some of it. Like for example, web development. Maybe we can share with the county's web developer. Maybe Windows developer. Maybe we don't do the development in the house. I don't know that yet, but I know that we need these roles. Yes. Yes, sir. Correct. I think you said that your role ends at the end of the year. Correct. Because you're a consultant for this particular project. Yes. Okay. Uh, as I recall, we, we did have someone that was doing this, and all of a sudden he just left. Yes. His name okay. is Tudor. Okay. Were we able to salvage any of his programs or, or not? I'm um, not sure what you mean by salvage. Well, not sure what he did in his last days. Well, I'm look, what I did was I looked at, um, what I, I started with what we have. I'll just go back to this slide. This is the kinds of stuff that an IT organization should be providing. And then I looked at how much of this stuff are we doing. And I looked for concrete examples of where are we managing projects. When you take the Munis project, for example, did we really do project management on, on, on Munis? Well, the answer is no, we didn't. 
and, and you know, we're not doing this. Uh, this is where we're spending our time. So I can see and I can approximately where the time is being spent, what kind of service they're providing, and I'm very confident that we're spending all of our time on support and not doing it at the detriment of the rest. Yes? So at this time, you don't have any estimate what the cost would be roughly? Correct. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Um, so the will, there are potentially opportunities to share in certain of these functions with the county. Yes. Uh, for example, there's two I could think of off the top of my head. They have a part-time web developer who could use some more work, and they have a um, help desk, which we don't have. Now, I'm not to the point where I can recommend using their help desk. We are currently developing a list of um, requirements for a help desk that we would create, and then we could take that list of requirements and look at what the county has and say, does it match up? What we don't want to do is look at a particular solution and then go, well, gee, it does this, this, and this. Yeah, that's what we want, because then you, you, you miss, you, you, you're, you're skewed towards looking at what it does, you know, the bright, shiny light kind of thing, and then you're not seeing what it doesn't do. So you need to develop, independent of any solution, what, you, what your requirements are, and then match it up. Thank so you. we're doing that right now. Okay. Alder, Alderperson Kale. Thank you, Madam Chair. Because I'd like to read this again. Yes. Is there a way I could have this email? To sure thing. Alderman or a hard copy yep. of the PowerPoint? Sure. Where, where do you want me to send? I'll send it to somebody. Send it, uh, you can send it to the city clerk, and she can get it out to us. Sue? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. Sue I'll send it to Sue, asking so, her to forward to every, copy yeah. to everybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alderperson Gisha. It's your microphone. Yeah. Thank you. Andy, I'm glad you mentioned outsourcing, mm -hmm. because I, I see project manager and business analyst, which seem to be the two highest things on your list mm -hmm. of needs, plus all the other stuff we do, and it seems to me we would be creating something that already potentially exists just by contract. There's companies all over the place that do this. Well, How much of this would be city employees and how much would be yes. contractual? Okay, uh, I don't think you can outsource. Uh, I would not, I'll tell you the tasks I wouldn't, wouldn't be on my top of my list to outsource and that would be the project management and the business analyst. You can outsource building of specific pieces. Um, I'm sure one of my recommendations is going to be um, buy where you can, build where you have to. And, um, and then when you talk about build where you have to, there may be opportunities to um, reduce costs by doing things like sharing the cost with another municipality, not the county, okay, but the municipalities have more in common with us than the county has with us. So for example, let's say we need a new building permit slash licensing slash inspection software, and that the market for that kind of software is pretty weak. There's not a lot of good players, okay? Well, we would say, geez, in order to meet our requirements, we'd have to build that. Well, before we do that, what we do is go and visit, talk to other municipalities uh, like Pleasant Prairie, City West Dallas, other similar communities, and say, you know, do you need new building permit software? Oh, yes, we do, by the way. So let's go in together and, and share that cost. So there is a lot of opportunity to share costs with other municipalities, probably more so than there is with the county. But certainly, um, if we can buy something, you get a lot more bang for your buck than if you build something. Sometimes you have to build. But I, I would say that of those, of, of those things, um, so, um, that project management and the business analyst is not something to outsource. Software development is something we can outsource. Training is definitely something we can outsource. Um, preventative maintenance, not so much. Support, not so much. But uh, the, the, the development part and the training part definitely are high, high items. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Andy, when you've been going around talking to the various departments, what are the skill levels of the city employees as far as even basic computer skills? I've heard something, but I want you to confirm it. Well, I am surprised that we have Microsoft Outlook as our calendaring package, and I'm surprised at how many people don't use it. So. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but um, I, I, on my um, IT service contract that I have with the, with the various departments that I've already visited, um, a good number of them have Microsoft Outlook training as the one thing that they need training on. Um, I, I have not assessed the individual skills of individual employees in terms of their ability to use a computer, use Office, use Windows, use. but I would certainly say that there is a because we do run Windows here and we do have Office here, which includes Outlook, that there ought to be some basic competency in those technologies. There's no reason why they shouldn't have that skill if they're somebody who works on a computer. And if they don't have it, we need to get them that. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? I think this is a lot to chew on. Um, and um, 
Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Madam Chair. J just, um, Andy, just reiterate to us, you are looking from this, from the council for what, what are you looking for from us? I'm looking for you to tell me, good or, go forward or don't go forward on these two recommended changes. And that is rebuilding the department as a, under this um, sort of third party business for profit kind of thing. This is how we operate, this is how we behave. And secondly, to um, give us additional resources that we need, the means that we need to provide all of these services. So if you don't think that we need all of these services, then you'd say, okay, you know, we don't need you doing consulting or we don't need you doing preventative maintenance or whatever that is. But these are the things I'm recommending that we should be doing and we're not. So I need to build and, it up. And, as far, well, and we don't really have a, a dollar amount for Correct. the resources at this time. That's right. And I will be forthcoming with specific recommendations on how to get here. Right. But I don't want to go down that path if you're Unless like, you know, we're thinking something completely different. I want you to know where, where I'm coming from when I give you these uh, recommendations that are, will be forthcoming in the next several weeks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So just so I understand, then with the, it, the, there's no money on the table right now. It is, it is the concept of going ahead with more planning, and you want that permission from the council. You want that yes. endorsement from and the And they will fall. they will fall inside of these recommendations. So okay. I know, for example, one of the things I'm going to ask you for is somebody to do project management and somebody to do a, the business analyst. And I don't know if that's one or two, but we need at least, I know we need at least one business analyst. So now you know when I make that, that request, you know where it's coming from. Alderman uh, Bowers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chairwoman Hobbs to address. Is there any chance that these other cities, once they find out they haven't been billed, they're going to say, well, now you're billing us X number of dollars. Will they drop out? Or are they aware that they're not being billed? Well, I'm I don't know if that's a question for um, Mr. Pelkey. Oh. Yeah, because he isn't involved in the billing. That would be more, I think, finance answer. Uh, the finance director, Terry Hansen, wants to speak a little bit, and I think we, maybe he can answer that question, plus some other. He can give you, he's been working closely with Andy, so uh, I think we need to hear his perspective from a you know, city employee, city department. Okay. As far as I'm getting billed, I don't know. But um, if, they, if they do not pay, there is a contract in place to provide the services. So when those services are provided now, they will be billed. And if they don't pay, then, then we'll have to deal with the ramifications of them not following the contract. We'll have to deal with that when we cross that, if that happens. I don't anticipate that they would do something like that. I, you know, generally, municipalities want to be good neighbors. So, um, The other aspect to this on just a financial budgeting aspect is this will put all the IT services into an internal service fund. Right now we have the support that all the departments pay for their various programs go into an internal service fund and they get billed for internet service and, and whatnot. But this will take all of the salaries that are currently in the general fund, put them into an internal service fund, and then each of the departments will be charged an IT charge. And that's how that funding will happen. But it's, it's very important to know that we move forward with this, the budget will look different and we, like Andy was saying, he doesn't want to go down that road if you're not comfortable with it. We don't want to start budgeting that way because that'll be, that we're going to be calculating different rates and whatnot. So if we do not, if the council's not comfortable with this, we don't want to put all that effort into the budgeting and then also all of Andy's work as well too will be wasted. So we don't want to do that without some sort of nod stating this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. so. I, th I understand he's looked at it and he's seen what we need to do. He's not doing anything yet. And so he's ex showing us the picture. And if we want to go ahead, yeah. Alderperson Hannah. Alderman Hannah. Thank you. Terry, um, as it stands now, does this concept and direction have your endorsement? Yes, it does. Given that, may I make a motion? Yes, you may. I would make a motion. Forty-eight oh nine dash ten eight fifty-seven. Second. Oh, second. You can have it. Oh, okay, it's I'll been it it's time. been moved and seconded to um, um, approve resolution forty-eight oh nine ten. You have a copy of it in front of you, um, and this again is the uh, city council supports the recommendations of impact consultants, which is Annie Pelkey's presentation and authorizes staff and impact consultants 
to develop plans to implement such recommendations. So we're taking the next step if we approve this. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, Alderman Bourne. Uh, we're just recommending this to the full council for the next meeting. Yes, we're recommending it. It's not proposing it, but we're recommending it. Right. Yeah. Favorable recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other discussion? Okay. All the person Kittleson. Thanks, Chairman. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is an excellent start. It really looks great, and um, I appreciate the, the the work here. And and I think now I think we're going to go down the right path and and uh, get something organized and put it all together. Thank you very much. No, I stole it back. Okay, Alderman Gish. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Andy. Um, I know you've done. You've got to give it a superficial thing here. I'm on the IT steering committee along with Alderpris and Decker. There is, you've done a lot of work here. You, you've mapped out flows of work and so forth. I just want people to think that, ah, oh, just kind of looked around and saw some ideas. Uh, you had one particular slide, I know, with this showing the workflows of the various departments and the interactions. Um, uh, and I know you've visited with every single department head, every single one of our other business partners with this. Uh, and, have, and have done more than just what you're seeing here. And I didn't want people to think that you just pulled off some boilerplate presentation. Uh, you can see each one of these up on the screen, and he can better explain it, of course, than I. But to come up with the final conclusions, this is some of the data he put into it. So I thought people might find that interesting, Andy. Or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, one of the things I had, we had to do is take inventory of what we have. And uh, this diagram, which doesn't fit on the screen uh, entirely, um, shows uh, the departments across the top and the applications that they use in the middle and the servers and hardware pieces that, that run them in the various different locations like City Hall and the police and the MEG unit and what have you. And um, just to give you an idea, the green stuff is the stuff that runs on an AS400. And the, and the blue stuff is the stuff that's, uh, you know, Windows kind of stuff. So the previous direction was to get rid of the AS400 in a hurry. There's an awful lot of applications on green here. Getting rid of it in a hurry is a rather reckless uh, approach, you know. And um, each one of these applications, you know, provides some business function that runs that department. And it has to be carefully replaced. They can't just willy-nilly throw it out the window and bring in something else and we're all happy. Anyway. Um, no, I'll be done myself. Thank you. Um, you know, my favorite movie is Dirty Dancing. And uh, the, my favorite line in there is, I know it would scare the kids. Is, uh, is uh, when, when uh, Baby's father stands up and says, when I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. And I just want to go on record when we had our previous incarnation of the IT department and its direction, I was fully 100% behind it because I knew what a dinosaur we were in IT and thought this is exciting and this is great. We got to let loose the hounds. And, and I'm saying I was wrong. We let loose the hounds, I think, but without a plan and direction and a foundation. And I was, I was wrong. It, it was right that we made the change. I think we needed to make a change in IT. I'm not saying that. Uh, that I think was necessary to be done. But I think how we did it and, and my personal support of it was a mistake. I screwed up. I, I, maybe others did too. I wasn't the only vote. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, I think we, um, we have to, I guess, um, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Okay, we will be going on to council for uh, approval. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, if there's a motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Um, the only thing I want to mention is that we do have another meeting. This is this uh, Committee of the Whole is um, very involved. Uh, two weeks from tonight, August 18th, uh, harassment training. Uh, is mandated for all city employees. We are city employees, and so Human Resources will be uh, bringing in some presenters for us to, it's an hour-long presentation, I believe. So uh, I hope everyone can make that. It's important for us as... And it's how not to harass, not how to... Right, I, yes. We don't need help with that, but we need to understand the whole topic. Yes. Okay, so everyone, August 18th. Thank you. Regular time, 530.